Okay, Maria, so tell us about the classes that you use VoiceThread in. Okay, so basically I'm using VoiceThread in all of my classes. Um, I've been teaching 100% online, blended, and traditional face-to-face, -face, and I find that VoiceThread has been very useful for all type of classes. I tried something this semester that I wasn't thinking of sharing with you, but I actually... I use VoiceThread to do a reflection after a field trip. We went to a field trip. We visited a nonprofit voice industry in um, LA, and some of our classmates couldn't come. So we upload our pictures. We comment on VoiceThread, but I also use it in the class to keep that discussion going. So it was very powerful. The students gave me really um, good feedback on the. Um, on the journals, on the weekly journals. So that's what I think at the end of the day, I'm using VoiceThread in all the classes. So what I have today, because I think in Matrix, I was trying to show different um, approaches. The first one I want to share is a VoiceThread that it was created by me. And I do this in what I call week zero in my classes. And I basically share the syllabus with the students. And I ask them to first read it. This Sorry, that's my gardener. I first ask the students to read it and leave a comment. So that's very straightforward. Let me just go through my list. Um, so it's just a Word document that I upload. And I think is as you mentioned last time, it's a very no risk at all way to approach voice thread for the first time with the students. So in this voice thread, I tell them to just use the tool that they feel the most comfortable. So they usually end up leaving a, a test message. So this is just first page. And Maria, the, syllabus. The, yeah. the syllabus is actually available elsewhere to download? Yes, in mm -hmm. the star here page, I always have obviously the, the document. Mm -hmm. um, so then what I do, I just embed also the document. The, the voice thread in the in the Blackboard course. So this is just an example. So the students are saying basically hi, and these are my expectations. And I I learned this from you. Obviously, I have a couple of avatars. So the students start realizing that I can nice. take on different um, roles. Yeah, that was another student. And what I also it usually happen is that the students are scattered around the first page, you know. So once in a while, I have a brave student that goes to page um, at the end. I don't know if that was the case in this class. Because my expectation is that they ask questions. It's like, I read your policy for, I don't know, attendance. Mm -hmm. And I don't understand. Could you please explain? So that happens sometimes. It didn't happen in this class. And the students again um left all their message in page one but again it seems like a it yeah. seems like such a natural thing to do because that's exactly what you would do in a face-to-face -face class right mm -hmm. yeah well instead that sometimes in face-to-face -face class i don't have this visual tool so i basically tell them i'm going to do a test a quiz you know about the syllabus and they kind of that force them to read the syllabus yeah. but i this is a less intrusive or aggressive way to force them to read that syllabus. Okay, so that was my first examples. I created materials, students make the comment. Um, the second example I found is in which the students are the ones that upload the visuals. So let me just go and find the right one. So I'm the one, no, it's not that one, sorry. I am the one that create the voice thread, the foundation, but Basically, in this case, they have to look for a visual, a piece of advertisement in a printed media, in a magazine. So they have to upload that and do the analysis. So it's a little bit different. I create, as I said, that foundation, but then it's up to the students to upload the material. So let me just show you an example. Morning students promotion is always... Um, I cover obviously the goals of the homework. I give instructions because Hello. this is the first time that they are actually editing a voice thread, not just commenting. I These give them examples, examples of a page, and this is finally the work of the student. So this student picked this. This is a page in a magazine, and this is his analysis. 
here. Execution. The copywriting begins with a headline in great sleep with the Can you hear? Courtesy of Michael, mm -hmm. at the bottom okay. right hand side of the page. A large font size and placement are designed to get your attention and hopefully read the small text below. So he does the analysis and one of the students comment. Hi Kenneth, um, I really like this ad that you chose. Um, I like the simplicity of it. I appreciate that it's simply a pair of pajamas. Um, automatically, you know, this ad is going to be about sleep. So um, I love this. <laughs> yeah, so that's, no, it's, that's it's, it's so no. great. Anytime you can have students go find content that demonstrates concepts you're trying uh -huh. to do to them. It's it's such a good application of VoiceThread. Was was very interesting in this one because I went for printed um, advertisement, but one of them I guess missed the hold on. He missed the <laughs> the assignment instruction or something, so he ended up embedding a video. So in this case, this student... Marsha, what happened? Put a video. Peter, hit me on the nose with a football. I can't go to the dance. Like and I actually realized, well, that will be a cool homework for next semester. Instead of, you know, analyzing printed ads, let's, let's get a video, a commercial. So, wow. So let's talk about the mechanics then just since we're recording this and I think that I think we've gone through this together as a group about how you did this. But in case someone watches this recording later, what did you have to do to be sure students could actually have that op opportunity to upload content? I'm glad you're asking me that question. <laughs> you don't have to show so, us, but if you could. Oh, no. Yeah. Wow. Well, I should look for it, right? Is when I did, I obviously create a PowerPoint. Uh -huh. Uh, before and then I I upload it and I think it was in in share rights if I'm not wrong uh, when I said share, share mm, let's say it was this class I can remember uh -huh. that's the class I yeah. give that right is right. that correct? That's exactly right. Yeah. So once everyone in a group, oh, you passed the test. <laughs> everyone in the group has the ability to edit, then they become able to add media to to the voice thread. So it becomes collaborative. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's a great way to use voice thread. Yeah. Stacey, have you used voice thread in that way at all? I have not had them edit anything yet. Um, just the, I just did the, what the first example she had when they comment. So, um, yeah, no, I think I, I think especially for a lot of the, I'm doing, um, all, um, links for mostly linked classes next semester. So I have things that are linked with, um, STEM classes or an undergraduate research class. So I think this would be like the kind of thing that will help take their, yeah. Well Mike, Michael, are you familiar with any uses of, um, any types of editing activities that faculty have done? Just anything come to mind that you'd want to share? Um, aside from most of the use cases I know of are similar to this, where they'll have, uh, you know, they'll contribute some kind of slide and have their commentary to it, and then have other students go in and add additional commentary and make the, essentially what you do as a group. Yeah. Conversation mm -hmm. In class, but taking it and use Boyster to do it online. Yeah, I, right. So um, for my online history of photography class that I teach um, at Mount San Jacinto College, we do some, I use the editing feature there too, and I may have shared this already, but I have students sign up for a topic uh, um, that it's different 20th century photographers, and I have a whole list, and they pick one, and then they, they just using an editable Google Doc, put their name next to that photographer, and then they're required to do a two-slide mini presentation about that photographer, and then there's certain criteria with it, and so everyone works on that throughout a week, and the next week, everyone goes back and kind of engages with the content that they've shared. Um, in a loose summarization, that's how that one works. So yeah, it's it's great to come up with ways to customize that to different di disciplines. Mm -hmm. Maybe PowerPoint, um, you're just making a bunch of blank slides then for that purpose. You're not. Is that how that works? No, you don't even have to you leave blank slides. So in so Maria's case, Maria, you would only have had the four. Yeah, it's four slides four. up. Oh, okay. And then when the students go in, they just have to oh, know okay. where to click to get to the edit feature. Yeah. I remember they did this in their class last summer. Exactly. <laughs> um, and it, this is also interesting 
case because this came out of the need that the students have to do the final presentation for a whole semester, but we couldn't meet at the same time. This was for an online class, and I was expecting them to have a synchronous final presentation, and they were telling me, Professor, we can get together. They work, you know, some of them were working at night, day. So one of them said, why don't we use VoiceThread, and we will record the presentation, and we will... Uh, you know share it with you and you can ask questions and we will answer the questions so the timeline was a little bit stressful because it was by the end of the semester but this was the results and i thought again it was a very very good way so this is a marketing plan um and the students just share let me not pause it Hello, Tina. That was my feedback Just already. Quick. So let me go. This is how it was presented. There is an exciting new organization created and named to support our flagship product, Optic Print. Our revolutionary Optic Print product is a milestone as it's the first device ever that is both a projector and a printer. So again, the whole group came together. They prepared the PowerPoint. Um, they did the voice thread and then this was my first feedback and question and then they answered those questions and then i you know could provide with you know more feedback and it's almost in every slide that we are going to have that sort of interaction so it, it turned out to be very powerful did the students in other groups comment yeah, on both, each other's um i didn't do that because it was a small class and again because i have to submit the grades like let's say monday and they were doing this on a saturday um so it became really time wise it was a little bit yeah, stressful. that's funny i had um in my class i kind of the first time I had that same kind of workflow and then I realized, okay, if I back that up and then leave the last week for more interaction between the groups, it could be a little bit more dynamic. Yeah. yeah. Good point though. These are great, Maria. Yeah. And it's just, it was an eight week class. So I know next time I should do that, but I couldn't have final document without covering the last week in the semesters. I'm yeah. well, eight weeks, not even two months class so but again it was generated by the students that's what i love about voice thread that i'm thinking okay there is one way and the students are the one teaching me that there are many more ways to use it what a great archive too because normally you give a presentation unless it was recorded that was it um, mm -hmm. i think would be a good um tool even like a resume tool perhaps for these can they can they access these later on you know, what I usually have my students do, and, and Michael, ask, um, let me know if you have a different suggestion, but um, when I have my students create content in VoiceThread, I encourage them to do an export. Mm -hmm. um, so they can export the VoiceThread, and it, it, the, out, the outcome of doing that is, is no longer a VoiceThread, but it's a movie file. So it's something oh. that they could host on YouTube or any hosting does, site. Does it actually allow you to do that with yours? Because I know before that was like a paid premium only feature. No, it is part of, because the students have something called um, basic accounts, which is an upgrade above a free account. And okay. so they do have a certain number of exports. I don't know exactly what that number is, but when you have the site license, that's built into the account. Okay, gotcha. I just know that we tried doing that. It was a long time ago, so I just wanted to make sure. Yeah, so they, they couldn't, they could only export the voice threads that they have editing privileges to. So they couldn't do like our, you know, commenting activities or those sorts of things. But if they created one, they'd have the ability to do that. Mm -hmm. So are you guys ready for yeah. the next one? I think this is the one I am the most proud it gets of better proudest. this it gets better than this um and once again like in the previous one sorry i always get confused i do too. i cannot take too much credit for this one i actually would like to point out because stacy is the one that really helped me with this when i was struggling at the beginning of the semester so here we go <laughs> <laughs> You say it's your birthday. <laughs> it's not my birthday, too. Nope. You say it's your birthday. Oh, You're going to have a good time oh. and celebrate your birthday. And <laughs> <laughs>
You are so Happy funny. birthday to you. Oh my gosh. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Michelle. Oh. Happy birthday to you. That is the best. 